uh, so I want to give you a little heads up on that. So open your Bibles now to Genesis chapter number 29. Genesis chapter number 29. And I want y'all to, those that are at home watching online, uh, you, you, uh, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to be thinking about what you're thankful for and whoever's around you. Uh, if there's nobody around you, pick up the telephone, call somebody, and uh, tell them what you're thankful for. Amen? And we're going we're gonna to be doing that at the end of the service. All right, so uh, in, uh, in chapter number 29, we've, we've gotten uh, Jacob already uh, all the way now to the old country. The old country was uh, uh, in the east, what they would call in the east. It wasn't actually the east. It was more northeast of where, where they were. But it was, uh, it was uh, where, where Abraham's family came from. And uh, I, I just have to tell you this right off the bat. Abraham was the pick of the litter. <laughs> there was nobody like him uh, that was left up there uh, in, the, in the old country. All right, and so uh, 20 years in Haran. That's what the title of the lesson is for today. 20 years in Haran. Haran was a place in Mesopotamia. That was a nice place to live. I mean, it was, it was a lush area. They, they had pastures for the, for the cattle or the sheep, and they had, uh, they had all kinds of, uh, of water that they could, uh, they could get their water from. And, uh, and, and it, was a, it was a very wonderful place to live. And so... Uh, and so Jacob's life there was, was really not that bad, uh, and, and, uh, but uh, except for the people. Uh, and there were some things that went on there, not, not at the beginning, but, but afterwards. So, he, so Jacob arrives in Haran, in verse number one, Then Jacob went out on his journey and came to, into the land of the people of the east. Notice that it didn't say his home, because where was his home? His home was in Canaan. And God had already told him that this is your home uh, and, uh, you know, that this is where you should be and where you, you should stay. And he looked, and behold, well, a well in the field. Lo, and there were three flocks of sheep lying by it, for out of that well they watered the flocks, and a great stone was upon the well's mouth. And thither were all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the sheep, and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place. And Jacob said unto them, My brethren, whence be ye? And they said, Of Haran are we. And they, so they, they were of, of that area. And uh, he said unto them, Know ye Laban the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. And he said unto them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. Boy, this was a great conversation, wasn't it? I mean, this was just a wonderful thing, you know. And, and I'm, I'm thinking, they're looking at how does he know who Laban is? How do, who does he, you know, who's this guy? He just comes up here and he, and, uh, you know, and, and we don't know who he is. And maybe that's why they were answering the way they were. And, and they said, and behold, Rachel, his daughter, cometh with the sheep. Now, it, that was not a coincidence, by the way. God was working things out just like he did for Rebecca. And, uh, and he said, Lo, it is yet high day, neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. Water ye the sheep, and go and feed them. And, uh, and so he knows, he knows about sheep. He knows about sheep because his father taught him about sheep, because, because he probably had learned some from his grandfather as well. And uh, so he says, uh, and they said, We cannot until all the flocks be gathered together, until they rolled the stone from the well's mouth. Then we water the sheep. And so it was always done that way, and I guess that was always the way they were going to do it. And then in verse 9 he says, And while he yet spake with them, Rachel came with, his, with his, her father's sheep, for she kept them. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth, and watered the flocks of Laban, his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel, and lifted up his voice, and wept. Oh, why did he do that? Why did he weep? Because God had 
brought her to him. And I think he knew that she was the right one right off the bat. Uh, Dr. Griffith Thomas says that, uh, that uh, he saw her and uh, it was love at first sight. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so, and Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother. Now, actually, he, he was her father's nephew. But see, they didn't count it that way. They counted it as a brother. Because they, uh, they and that, that's the way they always had. And that he was Rebecca's son. And she ran and told her father. And so next thing he knew about her is she was a good runner. Because <laughs> she ran and told Laban that, uh, that, that, uh, J- that Abraham's son, uh, grandson was there. And, uh, and, uh, and that Rebecca was his grandmother. And so uh, it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's uh, son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to the house. And he told Laban all these things. He told him all about how things were going back in Canaan. And, and uh, so here's Laban, and uh, Laban is, uh, was Rebecca's brother, and uh, they, they were close. I mean, they, they were very close. And uh, he was really wanting to hear all about her, to find out what was going on with, with her. And, and Laban uh, said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a month. And so for 30 days, he's, he's living with him, staying with him. He's, he's doing thing, And I never hear anything about, I, Jacob said, uh, hey, hey I've, got to, I've got to go back. He never said that. I wish he had because it's, God had already told him, this is, this is your home. This is your place. You come here. As long as you're in the land, you'll be blessed. Now, when he's outside of the land, everyone else will be blessed with him. Everybody else will be blessed. Why, did the, why has America been blessed the way it has been? Because of the Jews that live here. Because of the Jewish people. You say, oh, wait a minute now. They, they're, they're, uh, they, they killed Jesus. I'm sorry, but they did not kill Jesus. It was, it was Pontius Pilate that made the decree to take him and crucify him. They cried out, say, crucify him, crucify him. They were with him in, the, in this dastardly deed that he did. But it was the Jews and the Gentiles who were guilty. And so I've heard for years and years people say, well, the Jewish people are, are God's enemies. No, they're not God's enemies. They're God's people. They're, they're, they're a peculiar treasure unto him. They're, they're the, the, the light of his life. They're everything to him. And so in, in this, uh, I, I was looking through uh, Dr. Schofield's notes down there at the bottom, and, and, uh, and, and I noticed that the, in Dr. Schofield's note, he had five things that, uh, that uh, happened when Jacob arrived in Haran. Five things that, uh, that happened there. And number one was that he was out of the place of blessings. He's not in the, in the place of blessings in Genesis 26, 3, sometime you can look at that and look over there at it, and it'll tell you that, uh, that as long as you're in the land, you'll be blessed. But when you leave, you know, I wish Jacob had remembered that all of the days of his life. Do you think God could take care of them in the middle of a famine? God could feed them in the middle of a famine? He could. And, uh, and he, he would have, but they, they went down to Egypt. Remember, nothing good ever happened to Israel when they went down to Egypt. Nothing good ever happened to them. They were always in a, in a worse position than they ever had been before. So, number one, they were, he, was, he was outside of the place of blessing. When he, when he passed Bethel... He was walking on his own terror, his own, his own land, not, 
not his land, but he was walking on enemy territory. Number two, he was without an altar. I didn't hear, I didn't see anywhere where uh, Laban went and, and offered an offering to the Lord because Jacob had arrived. Uh, and we didn't see anything about that. And that's because they were idolaters. Where did they get idolatry from? They got it from Babel. They got it from, from uh, that area uh, down there in Ur of the Chaldees. They got that, that thing of idolatry, and so they had, made, they had idols that they had. Thing. You say, how do you know that? Because Rachel stole some of her daddy's idols and, uh, and took them with her. Now, she didn't need any idols because God is not a God who is worshipped by a graven image anywhere. He's, he's not, uh, he's not work, worshipped in any, any way other than in spirit and in truth. That's the way we worship him. That's what Jesus told us. And so he was without an altar there. Hosea chapter 3 and verses 4 and 5 talks about that. So if you ever want to look at that. And then he gained an evil name there. He gained an evil name. He had worked for them for 20 years and then they start, they start, you know, he came in here and he's, he's richer than we are, you know. That's because God was, was blessing. God was blessing him, but it didn't mean it. it wasn't, they didn't mean it for, for good. They meant it for evil. <laughs> all right, and so all of these, uh, these things happened. And, and, uh, and then uh, not only that, he was under the covenant care of Jehovah. He was under the covenant care of Jehovah. In Romans chapter 11, uh, if you read that whole chapter, you'll find the covenant blessings of Israel are, are promised there in the book of Romans. Romans chapters 9 to 10 and 11 uh, are sort of a, a parenthetical section in the book of Romans because they teach us about God's pl uh, place for Israel and, and how he is, he is not finished with Israel. Hath God cast away his people which he foreknew? And Paul's answer to that was, God forbid. Let that be the last thing on your mind. That is not going to happen. And so he was under the covenant care of Jehovah. And uh, uh, then the last thing was that he was ultimately brought back. You see, that all the things that... Jacob was going to go through, Israel was going to go through as a nation because that's where they are today as a nation. They're without an altar. They don't have any altars. They're not offering sacrifices. That, that, that's, that stopped 2,000 years ago. And so they're, they're, out, of, they're out of the place of blessing. Uh, they, they're without an altar. They've gained an evil name. In the world, a lot of people just hate him, hate them. They they hate Israel. Now we're the church, and we should we should love them because our Savior is a part of their nation. Our Savior is a Jew, and uh, and uh, they're they're still under the covenant care of Jehovah today. And not only that, God is going to call them back into their land. And so they will be back in the place of blessing. You say, well, the ones that are there uh, today, uh, they have made the, 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 the landscape to, to bloom like a, like a rose garden. They, they have made all of the, the, the deserts to, uh, to bloom because they've irrigated it out of the, the Jordan River. And uh, they've, they've made all of these things to happen. And, and uh, they're, they're ultimately going to be brought back into the land. And when they are, it's going to be a wonderful thing. All right, and so Laban welcomes Jacob home. Oh, he's, he's, he's just so happy to see him. Oh, we, we can hear all the stories from, from, uh, from, the, old, from, the, uh, from the, the other part of the world where they're, they're down there. And, uh, and so he ran to meet Jacob. He brought him to his house. 
He expressed their kinship. He said, you're bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. You're just like, uh, you're just like one of us. And uh, I think he was hoping that he was going to stay there. But he couldn't because God has, has been prompting him to come home. And, uh, and, and uh, so he, uh, but it was, it, was 20, it was 20 years before he got back home. That's a long time, you know, 20 years. Uh, you know, and uh, a lot of things happened in his life between those things. And, uh, and in verse, verse number 16, we find out that Laban had two daughters. And, and I found, uh, uh, you know, looking at things uh, over the years and, and uh, different, different things uh, uh, with the people that I've, that I've had dealings with in the ministry and all kinds of things. Uh, when there's two daughters, uh, usually one of them uh, is uh, envious of the other one somehow. Somehow they're, they just have a little more, you know, you know, oh, I wish I looked like you, uh, or I wish you looked like me, <laughs> or something, or different things that, that were that are, that are there. And so they, uh, they, he had these two daughters, and uh, and of course there was the elder daughter, and she was, uh, she her name was Leah, and Leah was uh, uh, what the Bible said uh, is that she was tender eyed. Uh, which means that uh, she was kind of she she was kind of weak eyed. I expect she needed some glasses, but uh, they didn't have glasses back then, and so she probably went around squinting all the time. And uh, and there she was, but she was the elder daughter, and uh, and uh, she was tender eyed. Her name means languid or weak. So I guess she was that way from her birth. You know, that, you know when they named her, they named her a good a good name, Leah. Uh, weak, and and there she was as uh, and uh, uh, and then the younger daughter. That's the one he saw uh, that that uh, that st stole his heart away. Amen. All right. And so uh, the Bible says that she was beautiful and well favored. Now you can read into that whatever you want to. Uh, if you look into the Hebrew, uh, it tells us that uh, it means that she was beautiful and well favored. All right, so there she was. And her name means a ewe, which is the female sheep. Uh, a ewe. And not Y-O-U, E-W-E. -E. Amen? All right, and so uh, Jacob loved Rachel. He, he, it was love at first sight. The first time he saw her, he, uh, he, was, he was enamored uh, and uh, I guess for, for all those 30 days that he was staying there, uh, you know, that was in, living in the house there and everything, he probably couldn't keep his eyes off of her. You know, that was the kind of thing it was. It was, it was uh, he was smitten, I think they call it. All right, and Jacob loved Rachel, and, uh, and he goes to, to Laban, and, uh, and uh, Laban asked him, he said, well, you know, you, you've been living here 30 days now. What, what do you want? Uh, what do you want for wages? We'll, we'll give you something for your for coming, and because and, and, he was working, he wasn't he wasn't just sitting around, you know, uh, eating grapes and dates and things like that. He was he was there working and uh, laboring. Everybody, I think they they liked him being there. All right, and so uh, uh, they agreed. Uh, he and Laban agreed that uh, that he would work seven years. And then he would give him his daughter. Oh, that, that, was, that was music to his ears. He said, seven years, he said, I could do that standing on my head. Amen? He could do that any time. I'm, I'm, he just, oh, he was so happy. And uh, so he worked those seven years. And at the end of the seven years, he says, okay, give me my wife. And, uh, and Laban said, okay. Uh, so this is what we'll do. I'll have the great have a great feast, and so he, he put on the big show, and they uh, they said that, that it would last for seven days. Uh, this this feast that they would have, and then at the end of the feast, uh, he would bring the the daughter out, and uh, then they would go to his tent, and that was that was the marriage ceremony, and that was what they did uh, in those days. All right, and so he he made this great marriage feast. Uh, and I'm sure he, he, they invited everybody from all around to come. 
And I don't know if they sent out invitations, but they, uh, everybody knew about it because it's probably a small town. I don't know. And, uh, and everybody knows everything in a small town, pretty much. All right, and so <clears throat> he, uh, uh, he, he, uh, he comes, and, uh, uh, and it's the last day of the feast, and oh, he was so uh, anticipating all that was going to happen. And so he, uh, they, they bring the, the bride out, and she's covered with a veil. So uh, you can't see who she is or nothing. And so the next morning, he looks, and it's not Rachel, but it's Leah. And he said, he has, he's deceived me. He's deceived me. And so he, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, he, and he said, uh, now, I, I served seven years for, your, for Rachel, your younger daughter. And, uh, and Laban said, is, uh, uh, you know, he had already said, you know, it's better for me to give her to you than to give her to some stranger. Well, that, that doesn't sound like a very good recommendation to me. I don't know about you, but uh, that just doesn't sound like it. Uh, but uh, when Laban uh, comes to him and he says, uh, you know, well, this is the way it, it works around here. He says, I don't know how it is where, where you live, but, but right around here, this is the way we do it. We don't give the younger one before the older one. You know why? Because there's afraid that nobody would take the older one and that she would be left at home all the time <laughs> and he would have to pay for her upkeep for the rest of his life. He didn't want that. He wanted somebody else to come along. So he did. Uh, he gave her the elder daughter. And uh, Laban agrees uh, again. Uh, Jacob, Jacob just tells him, he said, now listen, I, I love your uh, daughter, Rachel, but I don't know about Leah, and uh, Leah knew that he, he wasn't so uh, enamored with her as he was with her sister. Now, she knew that, and, uh, uh, but you know what? She, she was a good daughter, and she did exactly what her daddy said. Now, you say, well, well he deceived her. Well, if you'll remember back in the, in the story where... Uh, Rebecca and Jacob had, had uh, s- deceived Isaac into giving the blessing to Jacob. Now, that was the kind of family that she came from. Laban and, and Rebecca were brother and sister, so they, they, they grew up in the same house, and they had the same kind of upbringing, and they didn't, they didn't think it was wrong to give, uh, just to tell a little white lie. Now, that wasn't a little white lie. That was a, that was a big old whopper. <laughs> that was something that they, they didn't have any uh, understanding of, that, that God does not like a lie. God, God hates liars. You know, the Bible tells us in the Revelation that, uh, that all liars will find their place in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. You know, we, we, I used to use that as I, uh, I was witnessing to people. I, I said, uh, uh, you know, to have them read that verse in the book, in, in Revelation chapter uh, 21, and I think it's verse number 8. And he said, and it says that uh, all, lie, all murderers and all that, you know, and when they'd say murderers, I said, oh, wait a minute, you haven't ever committed a murder, have you? And they said, oh, no, 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 no. And, uh, you know, I'd get down there to the, where it said liars. He said, I said, well, have you ever told a lie? And they would say, hmm. I, I, I gave that to a guy on the, on the telephone one time. He was, a, uh, he was a, a, one of the telemarketers that he called. And his name was Carlos, I believe. And, and uh, Carlos, you know, I, 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 said, uh, I said, now, Carlos, if, I'm going to listen to your, your, your thing. You, you go ahead. If you'll give me exactly that same amount of time to tell you something, too. And I did. And, and uh, you know what? He, uh, he prayed and asked the Lord to save him that night. I, and I, you know, you know, I was, that was just on a, on a telemarketer call. And, uh, you know, I had my, my little card with my verses and all that right beside the, the phone and everything. So when the phone rang, I was ready. And, uh, and, I, and I used that. And uh, I asked him, I said, well, have you ever told a lie? And he said, yes. I said, did you know that God, what God says about that? And, uh, he, and he said, yes. And I said, do you want to get saved? He said, yes. 
Huh, you know? And, uh, and that excited me. I mean, that, that's something that, that builds your, uh, your, if you want self-esteem, win somebody to Jesus. And you'll realize that you didn't do it, but he did. But, but it, it really helps you to know that uh, that is something that God has used you to help somebody come to Christ. Aren't you so, uh, the, the, after the feast and all the things are over the next day and earth, and he, he just comes, he comes to the lay man and he says, what have you done? You've, you, have, you have deceived me. And, and I call this uh, Jacob the supplanter being supplanted by Laban. <laughs> He was, he, was, uh, he, was, he was not looking at just another guy. He was looking at the master of all deceivers. And there he was. And, uh, and uh, so he, uh, he says, now, he said, now this is the way it is. We, our custom is to give the older one first. And then we can give the younger one. And he says, so, uh, and so he says, you, ser- you serve me for seven more years and you can have Rachel. And so what did Jacob say? Okay, I'll do it. He said, I'll do it, no matter what. He said, it, it, if it takes seven more years, he says, I'll do it. And so he works for seven more years. That's 14 years to get one girl that he really was in love with, uh, but he had to take the, the, daughter, the, 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 uh, the older daughter too. All right, so that, it was, uh, that, that was a long time. That's a long engagement. Uh, I don't know about you, you know, uh, uh, but uh, that, that's way longer than, uh, than, than most people want to wait. And there, there he is. So he's waited for, for 14 years. And at the end of the seven years, he marries Rachel. All right. I don't know if they had another feast. It, the Bible doesn't tell us. I don't know if, I don't know if they did the same ritual and, and all of that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure because the Bible doesn't tell us. But whatever it was, he, he had two wives now. He had two wives, and they were sisters. I don't know if that could ever work. I don't know if that would ever work. All right, and so God's, God, uh, 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 he works for those seven years, and, uh, and, and then he's, he marries, he's married to Rachel and, and, and to Leah. And so Rachel was the beloved one. Oh, she's, uh, she was the one that he loved so much. But Leah was the one that was having children. And Rachel did her, she was barren. And the word, the word barren means that she couldn't have any children. All right, and so he, he saw that, uh, that Leah was hated. Now, when, when the, the Bible says that, uh, that word hated there, it, it's not like he loathed her or he, he despised her. It's just that he loved her less then he loved Rachel because Rachel was, was the first one that he saw. All right, was, but Rachel was barren. And uh, the sons of Jacob that were born to Leah with, uh, were in verses 31 to 35. And uh, the first four of the children uh, that come into the family, and there'll be eight others that come into the family through various other means. And and there there's the uh, and we see the uh, uh, the beauty of what God is doing. And so the first four come, and uh, the first one is Reuben, and Reuben means see a son is born, and that's what his name means, Reuben. And so Reuben was born, and so he was the eldest, and he would be the one that got all of the uh, inheritance uh, if. If uh, you know in the family, and then then there was Simeon, and his name means hearing. And he was one that uh, they said, uh, "Here, another born, another child, another son is born." And then the third child was Levi, and uh, and his name means joined together, and uh, and he was joined together to the family. And then the the fourth was Judah. And his name means praise. And so Judah was born, and, and, uh, and then Leah stopped having children. She didn't have, but she had those four. All right, and so uh, this, this was the beginning of a family. 
that God was calling out of the world in order to bring them into the place where God wants them to be. And so they were being called out of the world. And, and that's where Abraham was. Abraham was uh, in Ur of the Chaldees. He was in Haran. And then God called him out of, of the world and brought them into the place of, of, uh, of blessing. Because that's everything that uh, Abraham touched, everything that Abraham did, he was blessed in. He was given blessings in. All right, and so uh, we have this, uh, this beautiful uh, chapter here that uh, God has, has given to us. And, uh, you know, even, even though he felt deceived, even though he felt like he had been uh, lied to, he was, he was happy to have his wife and his children. So Jacob was, uh, was one who uh, was reaping many of the things that he sowed earlier in life. We, we, can, we can always look to reap for what we have sown in life. You say, well, uh, you know, well, is, is that fair? You know, what about, uh, you know, do I have to reap for the things that I did before I was saved? I'm afraid so. Because some of those things have affected your health and, and your well-being, and, and you have to live with that the rest of your life. And it's not something that you can just say, uh, you know, uh, go away and, they, and they'll go away. They, they just, you just have to. Paul, he said, uh, what did he say? That three times he begged God that God would take the thorn in his flesh away. And God just gave him this simple answer. Uh, my grace is sufficient for you. And that's what God told him. And you know what? Paul never asked again for God to take away the, the thorn that was in his flesh. What's the thorn in your flesh? What's the thorn in, in your flesh tonight? What, what is the thorn that, that you're having to live with? And you, you might think, well, it's, it's, there, there are several things, you know. And God wants us to serve him no matter what is going on in our life today. No matter if it, it, it was the result of something way back there, God wants us to do what we can for him today. God knows what we can do, and he knows what we can't do. And God wants us to do something to help somebody to come to know him. And if we can just do that, I believe we'll be doing God's will. Next week, we'll be looking at chapter number 30 where uh, uh, we're going to see uh, what really happens between this, these two daughters. Because it, it was, you know, they were, they was, uh, there was a lot going on. And, uh, and there's, there's a whole lot uh, going on in these chapters uh, and, and between uh, chapter 29 and chapter 31, uh, Jacob is still not back in the land. But after that, he gets back to the place where God's blessings are. But he had to go through some things, and he had to learn some things before he could go and do God's bidding and do what God wanted him to back in Canaan. And so we have, uh, we, we have a lot of things that we can look at, and we can see... And God is so good, and we're, we're thankful for what he can do for us. Thanksgiving is a time of just doing that, just giving thanks for what God has done in each and every one of our lives. And, uh, and all, all of you that are at home, uh, I want you to, you to find somebody and uh, tell them something that you're thankful for today. And if you can do that, I believe it will make your day a whole lot better. Uh, when Thanksgiving Day gets here. And we're going to be doing that here in the church, too, during our prayer time. And uh, so God bless you, and uh, we're going to have a word of prayer, and then we'll, we'll sign off from there. Father, we love you today, and we're so grateful for your goodness, the grace of God that, that reaches down, way down to a, to a lost sinner and, and helps him, Lord, to come to Christ. 
And Lord, I pray that you would just bless. Help us, Lord, uh, to help all of the, those that are around us to come to a place in their life when they see Christ as their Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, and we'll, uh, we'll see you all on Sunday morning, and be sure to be here to hear Brother David preaching on the Millennial Kingdom. Amen. It's going to be good. God bless you.